Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to The Audio Analyst. If you've been in and around this industry for any length of time and don't know the name Silversmith Audio, you need to rectify that. Founded in January of 2000 by the now retired Navy Commander Jeffrey Smith, he has built an amazing presence in the cable world. After 28 years as an engineer studying sound transmission and working with the acoustic environments of the world's oceans, I was lucky enough to meet him while he was showing his original silver foil cables at the 2002 Consumer Electronics Show. Now, to save time here, as there's quite a bit there to cover, I'd refer you to his About Us link on the Silversmith Audio webpage to see his remarkable story, and I've included that link in today's description. Back in November 2020, I reviewed his new foil speaker cables, the first product he brought to market using the proprietary thin ribbon foil material he calls Fidelium. Now, if you missed that work in print or here on the channel, you missed my pronouncing it as my first ever product of the decade, 2011 to 2020. How was that new proprietary foil loudspeaker cable deserving of such an honor? Quite simply, I have never heard another loudspeaker cable that offers anywhere near its accomplished level of performance across every crucial attribute for less than 15 or even 20 times its comparatively moderate asking price, just $1,395 for an 8-foot pair. And after a call from audio pal Steve McCormick, who called to inform me that he found that using two sets offered even more exceptional performance, I went to buy wired sets on my Von Schweikert Audio Ultra 9 loudspeakers, and the result was even more effective than I had any reason to expect. Simply stunning cables. So let's take a deeper dive into just what makes these new interconnects so special. First of all, the conducting foils used are of the same proprietary metal foil used for the amazing Fidelium loudspeaker cables that have created such a stir. Insulated and protected inside a very functional and attractive webbed mesh loom. One very clever added feature with their jacket is that each cable features either a red or white thread integrated into its mesh running their entire length to easily distinguish left, white, from right, Red. The XLR terminations are custom sourced for Silversmith and are of low mass, low involvement, and are simply plated with rhodium. The contact pins, while not made of the mysterious Fidelium alloy, are fabricated of an alloy that follows the same science behind it and are, according to Jeff, more conductive than copper and offer less time smearing than either copper or silver. The result is a product that looks as beautiful and sturdy as it sounds. If you suspected that these cables may be complex and time-consuming to assemble and terminate, you'd be correct. Jeff himself is meticulously constructing each set for now, which severely limits his production capabilities. To that end, he is currently searching out a manufacturing team that has the ability to carefully and reliably assemble them so that he can meet his production goals. One of the first things that stand out in conversation with Jeff about his cables is that he completely eschews the standard inductance, capacitance, resistance, impedance stance and talks about wave propagation. His designs are based solely upon the physics model of electricity as electromagnetic wave energy instead of electron flow. For too long now, many have assumed that the audio signal courses through our cables like water through a hose, the analogy we were all given in our introduction to electronics. While Jeff modestly suggests that he is one of only a few cable designers 
to base his designs upon the physics model of electricity as electromagnetic wave energy instead of the movement or flow of electrons, I can tell you he is the only one I've spoken with in my over four decades exploring audio cables and their design to even mention, let alone champion, this philosophy. Cable manufacturers tend to focus on what Jeff sees as the more simplified engineering concepts of electron flow, impedance matching, and optimizing inductance and capacitance. By manipulating their physical geometry to control LCR interaction values, they try to achieve what they believe to be the most ideal relationship between those parameters and, therefore, be able to deliver an optimized electron flow. Jeff goes as far as to state that, within the realm of normal cable design, the LRC characteristics of cables will not have any effect on frequency response. Now, Jeff's designs are based on pure engineering, and he described how he developed the material used in his Fidelium alloy this way. In my old days as an anti-submarine warfare officer, we used FOMs, or figures of merit, to predict our ability to detect sound in a particular ocean environment. Rather than quantity, it is a derived metric or value used to quantify, to characterize, and to represent the performance or efficiency of a thing to facilitate a comparative analysis. Now, when you Google the term, you'll learn that a figure of merit is a numerical value that measures the efficiency or effectiveness of a device, system, or method in relation to its alternatives. FOMs are often used in engineering to determine the relative usefulness of materials or devices for a particular application. Jeff goes on, it is important to understand that FOMs are calculated from equations. The equations include variables that describe these parameters of the thing under study. It's important to note that there isn't a set or established FOM in wave physics that I turn to for my analysis. I derived the FOM equation to allow me to compare the skin effect properties of a conductor and their subsequent accuracy when conveying an electromagnetic wave. In this particular case, there is no subjectivity involved when determining the best material. In some studies, some subjective decisions have to be made as some variables are inversely related. For example, when studying a COVID-19 vaccine with variable strength, the stronger the vaccine is made, the better it is at killing the virus. However, components of the vaccine are toxic. The stronger the vaccine is, the more toxic it becomes. In this case, someone has to make a subjective decision about how to balance efficacy with toxicity. This isn't the case with the wave equations and the FOM I derived from them. The variables are non-interrelated. There is an objective best for all of them. I did not have to subjectively balance any of them to achieve a sound that I liked. I simply found the material that was objectively best in all variables, and that material obviously had the highest FOM. Pretty straightforward, no? I had been anticipating hearing these new interconnects for some time, as they had been in development since shortly after I reviewed the astounding Fidelium speaker cables. With some of his early production challenges now resolved, he was kind enough to send me two sets of these beautiful, new foil-based balanced interconnects. Within moments of dropping them into play, right from the box, it was clear that these cables exhibited unwavering mastery in dealing with time domain, dynamic envelope, and transient issues. Right out of the box, imaging, sound staging, microdynamic expressiveness, and their accuracy of scaling of dynamics were unquestionably world-class. But after a few hours of auditioning them cold right from the box, I wondered how they might fare from an accelerated run-in process. So they went on my Audio Dharma Anniversary Edition Premium Cable Cooker for about 36 hours, an extraordinary and masterful device built by my good friend of more than 25 years, Alan Kafton of Audio Excellence AZ. 
As wonderful as the Fidelium Balanced Interconnects had been before cooking, there was a notable improvement to their overall smoothness of tone and texture, a more homogeneous sensation or presentation to sounds, especially with attributes like the blat of horns and both the sonority and individuality of massed strings. Not that there were any manner of concerns or less than exceptional performance before the burn-in process, but now, post-burn-in, they were slightly more natural or whole sounding. These remarkable interconnects are surprisingly affordable. I am totally knocked out by what they accomplish at this absurdly affordable price. The four and a half foot sets that I used for my evaluations are $1,125 a pair, and the three foot length sells for just $975. So I compared them to any number of meter and a half balanced interconnects in my cable stable from well-known and highly respected manufacturers, ranging in price from $4,250 to handmade special editions that sell for just over $35,000 a pair. While Jeff is very gracious in his assessment of my current reference interconnect cables, the production versions of the Stealth Audio Sakura V16 and one handmade limited edition Sakura V17, he admits to finding them to be extremely good, adding that they are some of the only ICs that approach the performance of his original Palladium cables. But he goes on to explain that Stealth Audio's use of larger wires, especially in my Dream V14 multi-alloy speaker cables, are responsible for the differences I noted between those $19,000 loudspeaker cables and his absurdly good and affordable Fidelium loudspeaker cables. He further posits that the differences I noted between those pricey and expensive loudspeaker cables and his Fidelium foils are more dramatic than what I may expect to hear between the Stealth Audio Sakura interconnects and his new Fidelium balanced foils. He cites his figure of merit position, saying that the $25,000 Sakura V16 and $35,000 handmade Sakura V17 interconnects probably would rate an FOM in the 60 to 80 range. His Palladium interconnects and speaker cables were rated at about 90, and the Fidelium speaker cables have earned an FOM rating of 307. <laughs> he then stated that the FOM numbers on the Fidelium XLR interconnects come in at 379, which he cites as about 20% better than the whopping 307 FOM for the Fidelium speaker cables. Regardless of the design approach, the accomplishments of these new Fidelium ICs are nothing short of exceptional. Their attributes are, not surprisingly, much the same as the strengths as I noted with his Fidelium loudspeaker cables. Everything is just so clearly presented. Their ability to resolve relevant musical detail and the resultant elevation of the master that resolution serves, transparency, are significantly accomplished besting in many cases, or certainly matching that, of every other interconnect in my stable. They permit me to hear further into recordings, and by a margin of improvement that was at least equivalent, and in many respects, better than the degree of enhancement I experienced with cables costing six to ten times their price. Much as I noted with the Fidelium loudspeaker cables in place, one of their most significant contributions is heard in how they accommodate the broadband arrival times and phase coherence of the music under their care, which these scintillating Fidelium foil ICs reveal even more precisely and accurately than virtually every other IC in my experience. I find that the speed of transmission across the entire audible spectrum and likely into each extreme beyond audibility is more coherent uniform and precise. With the Fidelium balanced interconnects in place, it was as if a formerly undetected level of time and phase steering, perhaps unnoticed with lesser cables, had been vanquished. My reference von Schweikert Audio Alter 9s play down into the 16 Hz region and up into 60 kHz territory. With the Fidelium ICs, there was an unmistakable improvement 
to the extension at both frequency extremes, offering revelatory proficiencies in pitch definition at the lower end, and delivering a delicate effortlessness, air, and ease in the uppermost registers, with both regions now seemingly rendered more accurately and authentically than with most all of the other ICs I had on hand for reference. With the Fidelium interconnects, bass not only seemed to extend deeper, but its transient envelope, its attack and decay, especially the leading edges of bass transients, are rendered in an especially lifelike way, one that conveys an inescapable authenticity to the weight, texture, and power of the music in play. Another of their extraordinary gifts may be found in their ability to express the overall enhanced richness of the tonal color palette conveying a natural and faithful sense of instrumental texture, of the sense of an instrument's reality or presence, and of its inhabited space, size, and voice. Their ability to recreate such completeness of textural character, rife with dense and authentic tone color, is simply extraordinarily realistic. In all, their sonic synergy yields one of if not the most outright authentic expression of musical reality and engagement that I have ever noted. They are the paradigm of proper voicing, with ostensibly uninhibited speed of transmission, broadband, unassailable accuracy of pitch, timbre, and tonal truthfulness, combined with a broadband coherence capable of rendering a corporal, tangible performance one that more closely approximates the live musical event than you will likely encounter, regardless of how much more you may be willing to spend. The only weakness I can point to with these supremely overachieving and truly world-class Vidalian Balanced Interconnects is that they are just slightly remiss in their absolute abilities to reconstitute the spatial properties of the full musical tapestry than some of the more exotic interconnects in my experience, such as those from the Stealth Audio Soccer lineup. I find those decidedly more expensive and exotic interconnects to offer a slightly more suitably real presence of instrumental voices, creating a more convincingly credible corporality, a more lifelike sense of space, size, and shape of those voices, things like body and bloom. While Jeff insists, and maybe rightfully so, that those are merely artifacts of those other cables' less accurate temporal capabilities, they offer me a more convincing view of the performance, one more closely resembling what I hear in local venues like Souter or Leighton Concert Halls or the Lerner or Morris Performing Arts Theaters when attending a live event. That one minor concern aside, these new Silversmith Audio Balanced Interconnects offer previously unavailable, exceptionally affordable access to state-of-the-art performance. They are arguably even more accomplished than the Fidelium loudspeaker cables. Regardless, you owe it to yourself to experience the exceptional Fidelium cable lineup from Silversmith Audio. You can thank me later. As always, Thank you for taking the time to drop by today. Further information on supporting the channel may be found in today's description section or at my website, theaudioanalyst.com. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers. <laughs>